G'day viewers, the end of another week means it's time once more for Totally Fucked Up Friday. Weekly roundup of stories that proves that, yes indeed, the world is totally fucked up. I'm going to start with a quick callback to Wang Effect Wednesday, where I talked about the CEO of AIG saying that even slightly criticising the banks getting bonuses after fucking the world economy was exactly the same as lynchings in the south of the US. Exactly the same! And unsurprisingly, the entire fucking world spoke out on what a piece of shit this guy was. And so he's issued an apology. And I use the air quotes because it's the classic non-apology. It's almost to a template. He didn't say what I said was unequivocally wrong. Oh, wow, you would have to be such a shithead to do that. I really apologize. I am sorry. It was offensive. It was wrong. It was inaccurate. It was a terrible thing to say, and I should really work on not being that much of a fuckwit again. No, he said, I didn't mean to offend anyone. That's the whole problem, you fucking piece of shit! That you can say something so egregiously offensive and self-serving and go, Wow, that offended someone? I'm living in such an insular little bubble of fucking privilege, it never occurred to me that that was offensive! Because you're fucking offensive, you piece of shit! I guess like, uh, later in the week, the Italian head of the Berea Pasta Company said he'd never use gay couples in their advertising and if they don't like it, they can just buy a different pasta. <laughs> to which everyone in the marketing department must have screamed at me, YES THEY CAN YOU FUCKING IDIOT! And he's also issued his real non-apology apology. It's just ridiculous that these people, it doesn't process that this is a bad thing to say. Even the fact that you really believe these things you're a figurehead, big public figure, never occurs to you, wow, should I say something that fucked out loud? Or should I just keep it for the gentleman's club where this shit always goes on? These people are so fucked up. It blows my mind. Although, oh, speaking of calling back to previous stories, the stories that never end. The people who want to destroy the internet. The constant attacks, every time one of the attacks is thwarted or at least watered down, something else comes up. And the Trans-Pacific Partnership, I've mentioned before, the TPP, it's getting very close to its resolution where this incredibly secretive international treaty will be tabled, and they'll say, ta-da, this is the laws we want enforced in these countries. And what's been leaked so far shows the proposals are far more restrictive than any laws in a lot of the countries that are signatories to it. And this is being pushed by the US primarily, but a lot of the other signatories, Australia included, are dead keen to be part of it. And what we know is some of the proposals include your classic three strikes internet thing. It's the whole thing about censoring the internet. Hey, let governments have complete control over what you see on the internet, but also in the name of copyright protection, this bullshit about shutting people off the internet. When it's become integral to life as we know it. The idea of shutting off an entire family or household's access to the internet because one person is accused of copyright infringement. Not convicted, not taken to court and convicted, but just accused by these vested interests with no oversight and you can have your internet cut off because you didn't do anything but someone you share a house with is accused of doing something. Yeah, that seems fair. And the, to make these provisions work, the ISPs would be required, not have the opportunity to, but be required to spy on each and every thing you do. We know it happens anyway, but it's kind of shit that it's going to be used in such a punitive way. And the same time, this week, I read about the constant assaults on net neutrality. Brief fill in, if you don't know what net neutrality is, it's the idea that once you're on the internet, all websites are served up to you the same way, with the same access, the same bandwidth. The ISP and phone companies and cable companies in the US can't say, oh, you know what? Um, 
this is my website, so I'm going to favor it. Ah, that's not my website. I'm going to strangle the bandwidth on that, oh, unless they essentially pay me a bribe. YouTube, YouTube's really popular. Man, they pay through the throat for us to not throttle them. Let's charge them for more money. That's net neutrality. And going on at the moment, Verizon in the US is actually running a court case challenging regulation saying they can't pull this shit. And out of the blue this week, the Republicans are going, oh, the debt ceiling, you can't raise the debt ceiling. Everything they ever say about well, the debt ceiling is a fucking lie and fucking hypocrisy. But this week, they've just pulled a bunch of stuff out of their ass. So, you know what? Uh, if you want us to agree to the things with the debt ceiling and not destroy our economy just because we're fucking wankers, or you have to give us these totally unrelated things. And one of them was getting rid of net neutrality. Now, the defense often put up by the lying sacks of shit or clueless, misinformed fuckwits who say, oh, you don't need net neutrality. They go, the companies aren't going to do anything wrong. Oh, they're running a business. They deserve the right to run their business. These fucking companies are already being paid twice for access to the net, for us to get on websites. And I will also point out, these phone companies in Wana contributed fucking zero to the creation and development of the internet. It's been a fucking cash cow for them. These companies were too stupid to understand how important the internet is. And they're sort of the type with a gun at their head saying, do what we say or the idiot gets it. They will, they don't actually understand they are capable of killing the internet. I want to squeeze a few more dollars. Oh, it stopped working. What the fuck was that about? But they're already being paid twice. You and I, we pay for our internet access. We're paying them to access. Every company that puts up a website as it hosted, they pay for the bandwidth of their website serving up. And these phone companies, these ISPs, cable companies are going, oh, you know what? Being paid twice for something is good. Oh, but being paid three times? That's obviously something we should be allowed to do. They don't want to run as a business. They want to run as a fucking illegal cartel and they want to strangle the most vital bit of the world fucking economy. These people are assholes and anyone who speaks out against net neutrality is either a lying paid for shill or a clueless fucking idiot. Either case, totally fucked up and should not be listened to. And I'm just going to wind up now with you know, you could argue sign of the coming apocalypse. A lot of people have been really worked up about Miley Cyrus of late. The way she behaved at the VMAs and more recently her film clip for the song Wrecking Ball. I don't care. This you know, pop star shit, what people are saying about Miley Cyrus, they said about Elvis Presley, okay? This shit just goes in cycles. Not my cup of tea. I don't think the things she's doing are particularly sexy. But for my money, the Miley Cyrus saga took a weird twist this week. If you haven't seen the Wrecking Ball video, good on you, neither have I. I've just seen little gifs of it. She, when she's not licking a hammer, she's swinging, yeah, with not many clothes on, on a wrecking ball. You know, a metaphor. She's very subtle like that. I don't really care that she's doing that in the clip. But what happened this week, apparently, a university in Michigan that had a sculpture of a pendulum on their campus had to take it down because it became a thing for students to do their interpretation of the wrecking ball video on this pendulum. Now this uh, sculpture was done in the 70s. It's been where it is without incident apparently for 18 years. And it's really cool. It's a big pendulum. It swings. It's even apparently got a little spike on it. So the idea behind that is when you swing it, it would draw patterns in a sand pit. So it's art. It's science. It's an institution at this university, but Miley Cyrus is a wrecking ball in more ways than one. It's just gone. The, the university is having to reassess, can we ever put this out? Will students stop being fucking idiots? How many university campuses have asked themselves that question over the years? Will students stop being fucking idiots? The answer is always no. No, they won't. That's part of being a student. It's the fun of being a student. So, a Personally, I want to take advantage of that. I want to lobby for Miley Cyrus uh, in her coming videos to do cavorty things over 
replicas of some of the worst sculptures in Melbourne. Yellow Peril springs to mind. And you know, then hopefully when people cavort all over them, they'll be taken away. Because there's some brilliant street art all over Melbourne and suburbs. But by cracky, there's some fucking ugly ones too. And I just want Miley Cyrus to use her powers for good and not evil. Because, you know, humanity has always had art. Humanity has developed science. But none of this can stand up to Miley Cyrus. It's <laughs>